Polly Taylor, how did you think Paige's story would end? Uh, not the way that it did. I was very surprised when I read the final script. I thought that, well, I didn't even think that Paige was going to become part of like the spy training at all. So that from the start was a surprise for me. And from then I just had no idea what was going to come next. And what do you think Paige is thinking when she gets off the train? Um, I think she's thinking that her parents have lied to her so much and she's been betrayed pretty much her whole life that what was she going to do if she moved with them to a different country where like she couldn't even speak the language and things like that. I think she knew that there was really no hope for her there and she didn't really trust her parents at all anymore. And what about, what is she thinking later when we see her drinking alone? Probably that she has no idea what else she's going to do. I mean, she doesn't know who she can see there, if the FBI is going to come after her, you know, where can she go that's actually safe and who can she talk to? There's nobody. So the next step is just to become an alcoholic, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, what do you think happens here? Do you think the FBI catches up to her? Or does she make contact with Henry or... I think that she definitely tries to make contact with Henry. That's her number one priority when she gets off the train. Um, I think that Stan probably lets the FBI ease off of her and doesn't give her such a hard time because she wasn't really that much involved. You know, she didn't like hurt anybody or anything. Um, but she probably just kind of goes into hiding and lives a more quiet life away from all the mess that she's been surrounded by her whole life. Although Elizabeth tells Stan that like they didn't kill anybody, so yeah. So he thinks, <laughs> but I'm. I feel like he knows at this point. Like once you have that job, you know, you kind of. I'm sure Stan knows what goes with it, and although he may not have killed some of the people closest to him, he he knows that they took part in some bad activities. Did you think that that would be in the cards for Paige eventually killing somebody, working as a spy? I mean, I don't know if it would have happened, but I think that it wasn't the plan for her. I mean, Paige has tended to go off plan sometimes in the past, so I don't know, but her parents just wanted her to be um, a part of the State Department and maybe work for the CIA and do like insider intelligence, um, stuff more like that, like paperwork and just, you know, planting bugs here and there, but no honey traps or murder. I don't think they wanted that for their daughter. Uh, now, I feel like they definitely didn't want that for Henry. Uh, how much of a joke was it on set where you guys are always saying like, oh, he's at the library or he's upstairs sleeping or at stands or that kind of stuff? Yeah, it, it was a joke because it was like every scene we would come in and it was like, where's Henry? And nobody really you know, knew where he was. I guess that was their way of like reminding the audience that Henry was still a part of the family. It's just that he wasn't always you know, present. He had his own life doing things. Um, but <laughs> I remember seeing that on Twitter a lot. Like when I would look at um, like people live tweeting and everything, that was always one of the biggest jokes. Like so many memes about Henry. <laughs> and a karate, that was another one I remember. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, who do you think gets the happiest ending in The Americans? Nobody. I think that every single person has a tragic ending. And in a sad way, that's kind of just the reality of it. You know, I think that, that was the saddest way they could have ended it. Not murdering people or a huge shootout. I think that that was way more heartbreaking because you realize that they have to live with the choices that they've made. You know, they don't get an easy out, you could say, you know, by being caught by the police or, you know, having their life uh, have some finality to it. So everyone's just kind of left hanging in this like morose, somber mood. It's really sad. And do you think that is the best choice for Paige, staying behind? Um, I think so for her personally, because her main priority was always Henry and she's always been taking care of him and kind of like a mother figure to him because her parents have been so absent. So to stay behind, you know, with his, um, his like safety in mind, I think that that was a really good choice for her. And like I said, she doesn't even like speak Russian or know that much about the country. So she would have had a hard time there. And when you signed on to this role, how much of a commitment did you think it would be? Like there's a show, you know, in Mad Men over eight years, they had four different uh, child actors play at the sun. So did you ever think that you might get recasts or anything? 
Yeah, I did a couple times. I mean, after the pilot, I wasn't sure if they were going to keep me because that happens a lot. Like they'll hire people for the pilot and then change it for the whole season. So I was nervous about that. Um, and it was my first time doing a pilot, so I didn't really know how it worked. So like as soon as someone tells you that there's an opportunity for recast, you're immediately thinking like you're doomed straight away, you know. Um, and then this year, I was kind of scared. I mean, I didn't think they would recast me, but it was a big time jump. And I do look a lot younger, so um, I was scared that they were going to think that I wasn't able to do it. So I'm really thankful that they still let me have that challenging role. Especially in TV, you know, all the teenagers are always like 30 years old. Yeah, exactly. That's why, because I had to convince them all because I'm actually turning 21 this year and that's how old Paige is. So a lot of them thought that like I was actually 16 because that's the role that I've been playing for so long. So I kind of had to like remind everyone and hand in my birth certificate and be like, look, this is actually how old I am, I swear. So um, it was funny, but at least I proved that I was able to do it. Now I understand that uh, you say your friends don't watch The Americans, and it's 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 not a show with a very large audience anyway. But what's it like being on the most critically acclaimed drama, you know, of recent years? I think that it's a really perfect scenario for me. I mean, I love being on the show because it does have such like a nice tight knit fan base that are so passionate about the show and think that it's the best thing they've ever seen. But then I can like go grocery shopping and I hardly ever get recognized or anything, you know, and I still have my own life outside of it. It's not like, like I was on stranger things or something and immediately was bombarded with like fame. So um, I think that it's been a really nice balance and I've been able to go to school and, but still have people talk about how amazing and beautifully done a show that you're on is, I think that's really an honor. What was the last thing that you filmed? The last scene that I filmed was when we call Henry um, after dinner, like, cause I say that I want to say goodbye to him, but then I can't talk to him. And that was like the saddest scene that we could have shot on the last day. And it was like five in the morning and there was a random blizzard that came that wasn't even in the forecast and we were crying and freezing to death. So it was really in true American style. Uh, by the time people see this, the finale will have aired. Uh, what do you think the reception will have been? I think that people are gonna like the ending just because of how heartbreaking it is. Some people might be expecting a little more like violence or you know, exciting action, but I think that this is really um, the most honest way that they could have ended it. I think that would have just been, you know, kind of phony in a way. So I don't know. I think I'm hoping that everyone will love it. I love it. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, my mom comes from a small community called Riverton, which is a suburb of a small town called Stellarton in Nova Scotia. You're from a small town called Middleton, uh, also in Nova Scotia originally. How much of a celebrity are you there in a town with fewer than 2,000 people? <laughs> I have no idea. I feel like they probably don't even know who I am. I have done a few interviews for like Canadian papers or articles like that, but I don't know because I haven't really been there since I've been on the show, but that would be really interesting to see. I do know that I'm more known in New Mexico than I am in New Jersey, which is really random. I'm, I'm shooting something there right now and I get recognized like all the time. Whereas when I'm here, it's like once every couple weeks or something. What are you shooting there? Uh, it's a show called The Unsettling for Awesomeness TV. It's a, it's a little horror show. So lots of scared faces, typical page stuff, you know, um, but uh, it's really fun. So I'm hoping it, it's gonna come out really great. And is that something you wanna do more of? Because at this point you've had, you know, like a full on acting experience. And it is also kind of your first uh, big role. And you're also in graphic design, I understand now. Like is acting something that you see yourself doing long term or you're still unsure what's going on? Uh, I think I wanna definitely do it for the next few years. Uh, I'm still auditioning for things and I'm enjoying it right now, but I do like to have backup options and try different things. So. I'm trying not to like put all my eggs in one basket, as they say. Uh, so maybe I'll change it up in the future, but I don't really have a plan as of now. Has anybody uh, reached out to you now that you obviously have availability not being on The Americans? 
Uh, yeah, well, that's how I got the show that I'm shooting now. Um, they were really excited to work with me because I haven't been available for like the past six years. So that was really nice. Uh, and then hopefully after that, I'll get some more people reaching out and just keep auditioning for things. And hopefully it keeps working. I don't know. <laughs> uh, do you keep in touch with anybody from the Americans? Yeah, um, mostly I keep in touch with Kedrick. Uh, he's like a little brother to me in real life, too. So we have a really nice relationship and just make fun of each other all the time. So that's really fun. Um, I'm going to see him at the For Your Consideration event at the end of the month where we'll do like a screening of the finale. So I'm really excited to see him there. Good. And uh, what would you say is your favorite memory from working on The Americans? My favorite memory is really just like any time in between scenes where you're hanging out with the cast. I mean, everyone has just been so nice. And the whole time I was on the show, everyone would say to me, like, you don't get this on every show. Like, you don't go to a set where the whole cast and the crew is this nice to each other all the time. So that kind of scared me going into other projects. But um, it made me realize how lucky I was just to, like, be able to laugh and have fun with all these people in the midst of such a sad show for six years. Have you been able to use any of the physical skills that you learned on the show in real life? Um, in real life, no, but I've had dreams that I beat people up using my skills. Um, but I kind of hope that I don't have to put those to a test in real life because I feel like it wouldn't look as good as it does on TV. Um, but I take like boxing classes, so I'm able to apply some of that there, like some of the technique that I've learned, it, it applies to that or just different I don't know, like martial arts and self-defense training. So it's really cool just to have those under your belt and hopefully you never have to use them in a dangerous situation. And the, yes, sorry, with, with all the uh, physical situations, like is that the most challenging thing that you do or is that just kind of fun? I think it's fun. It's definitely challenging just because um, you have to get it like really precisely or else you could actually hurt someone or yourself and you know to make it look good but not actually be hitting people is really hard um but it's a lot of fun because i started out as a dancer so to me it's kind of similar it's just like learning choreography and then performing it um so i really love that stuff but uh i think that i think that just the acting is harder for me Okay, and finally, what do you hope people take away from Paige's journey? I hope that people take away the importance of being honest with your children <laughs> and how much that can mess up your kids if you're not because we see how Paige and Henry might turn out. Um, and also just compassion because I think some people lack that for Paige and you know don't really see her side of the story, but she has a really hard life and I hope that you know even in the season series finale, I should say, uh, that people feel bad for her and realize how much she's been through and how much she still has to deal with for the rest of her life. All right. Thanks so much, Holly. And we look forward to seeing the Americans at the Emmys this summer. Thank you so much. <laughs>